members of the House will be getting back to work this week. And a major priority right now is wrangling with the details of a potential bill, potential bill to deal with the border to Ukraine. Last night, President Biden reiterated his support for legislation that would give him the authority to shut down the border if it becomes overwhelmed. Also last night, Donald Trump said he'd rather have no border deal than a bad one. So how much support is the current legislation garnering in Congress? Joining us now is Democratic Congresswoman Nanette Barragan of California. She is the chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Welcome to you, Congresswoman. Thank you for coming in in person. I, I first want to ask, have you seen any text, legislative text of this potential um, uh, secure border security bill? No, not a single word. We don't know what's in the details. We only know what's reported. We only know vaguely what the White House has shared, but no text at all. So there's really no way to say whether it's fantastic and great, as we're hearing from some people say, and we don't know how bad it is either. Uh, so it is, uh, it's a troubling when we're trying to make statements about the, uh, the deal that we haven't even seen. So I, I just have one follow up there. You know, when, when I worked at the White House and before we rolled out large uh, pieces of legislation or big policy, we would get on the phone and walk the key folks through the contours of the policy of an outline, if you will, or of the legislation, bring people in for a meeting. That has not happened for you. It's been very vague. Uh, there are things that I read about that I'm like, oh, I haven't even heard about this. Mm. So I think there's things that I definitely uh, don't know about. And I think that's very troubling. Uh, the other troubling part, you haven't had a single member of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus at the table who's been working on immigration, who's been leading on immigration. The equivalent would be as if you had the Congressional Black Caucus completely ignored and not at the table on civil rights issues, on voting rights issues. That would be completely unacceptable. So and it wouldn't happen. What what would then would you be looking for? Um, since you have nothing um, at the moment, what would you consider putting on the table to sort of help guide that process as they're writing this legislative language? Uh, and since you're not in the room, um, sort of using uh, the megaphone that is the, the Congress uh, and platforms like this, what would you say we would look for? Well, the first thing is everybody's talking about fixing the problem. How do you fix the problem? The way you fix the problem is you have comprehensive immigration reform combined with enfor enforcement provisions. Mm -hmm. That is not this deal. That is not what's being reported. There are no pathways. This is strictly enforcement. And that is the problem from what I am hearing. You're talking about shutting down the border. You're talking about a Title 42 equivalent authority. If you take a look at the 15 of the 20 months that had the highest apprehension happened when you had Title 42. So we have evidence that it didn't work. It's not going to make things better. People are coming between ports of entry because they can't come to a port of entry, right? And as I continue to remind people, asylum is legal. It is legal to come. It is legal to request and ask for asylum. Are we willing to come to the table and compromise? Absolutely. But you need to have a real conversation, a give and take. This has been a hostage taking, not a negotiation. It's not like Republicans have said, we will give you pathways. We will give you Docker, Dreamers, because we know that's bipartisan. They haven't said, we'll give you farm worker modernization. So we need to have that real conversation in a room if you want to seriously fix the problem. Right, there's no negotiation here. It is not as though you have gotten something in exchange. It is not as though you're talking about Dream or something for folks on the interior in exchange for all of the enforcement mechanisms that we are hearing Republicans want, which makes it even more remarkable that you have the Speaker of the House ready to renege on this deal, a deal that people in your caucus, the contours of you, do not like, simply because Donald Trump has told him to shut it down. Right. And let's remember, if Republicans were serious about fixing the border, they wouldn't be saying no outright to things that the president is asking for. The reason, one of the reasons the border is the way it is, you know, you've got to go back in time to do a historical timeline of that. But you have the last administration who failed to put money into infrastructure in the southern border. And right now, Republicans are saying no. Let's look at what Republicans have said no to. No to $805 million to combat fentanyl. They love to talk about this at hearings, but they don't want to put their money where their mouth is to put 
resources at the southern border to combat fentanyl. They have said no to $405 million for more border patrol agents. No to that. I mean, how are you going to address the situation? You need more resources. You need more people on the ground. They're saying no to that. They're saying no to more CBP officers at ports mm -hmm. of entry to speed things up, right? They're saying no to a billion dollars in ICE detention beds. Not even something I agree with. They're saying no to this. So there is a laundry list of what they have said no to. So we know they're not serious. And this is something I've been saying from the beginning. If you're serious, you're going to have a real conversation. It's going to be a real negotiation. That happened when the Senate deal was coming together. They, there was give and take. There was real compromise. Mm -hmm. And but that's not happening here because you've now paired it up with Ukraine and Israel. And I think that was a mistake. It should not be. But together. that was the only way that was going to happen. I mean, the realities of Washington right now, given, given what's happening on the ground in Israel with Palestine and what's happening in, in Ukraine, the only way you're going to cut a deal on immigration is that pairing, right? I mean, the, the, I mean even the administration uh, has put those two together. So how how are you saying you want to decouple that, or you absolutely? Would never? I think so. It was if you decouple that, if there's no will to uh, move forward uh, on immigration and there's no will to move forward on Ukraine, where does that leave us? Well, this is a republic. This is a Republican doing right. This is the Republicans basically saying, uh, who are splintering, of course, on Ukraine on ha helping our Democratic allies and saying, well, we're not going to do this unless. This is a dangerous precedent. What else are they going to start negotiating for uh, when you're talking about foreign policy and foreign aid? It's critical foreign aid that's needed. So um, you got to look to Republicans to ask them where they are. If they want to fix the border, if they really want to fix the border, they don't. This is their political you know, campaign messaging. This is what Trump ran on uh, last time. If they wanted to, they would be willing to have just a conversation on the border and get that done. And, and what can we make sure uh, what resources are going to the southern border, but that's not happening. What is the Congressional Hispanic Caucus's strategy going into this week? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at a statement that you put out in December where you noted we're deeply concerned that the president would consider advancing Trump-era immigration policies that Democrats fought so hard against. The statement goes on to talk about caving to demands for permanent damaging policy changes. Um, it, it sounds like this is end of January, almost February. You're in a similar place to where you were in December 2023. What is the strategy, and do you have a message to the White House you'd like to, you know, give them to one of these cameras today? <laughs> well, first of all, the Hispanic Caucus needs to be involved and at the table. Uh, that's the first message. Um, but we need to see text. We don't even see what is in this deal that we're talking about. So let's look at the text, and then let's sit down and have a conversation about what it's going to really take and when we're, how we're really... Uh, to compromise and what we're going to get in exchange for that. But that has not been the conversation, and that's the real concern here. Well, and there's a question of if you will ever see tax, because if Republicans will be able to politically unify around this. There was a tweet, or I don't know what we're calling them anymore, from Senator Schatz, who said, I think if Democrats were holding up funding for the defense of three allies, unless we got an unrelated thing, and then we said no to the very thing we demanded, because our nominee told us to kill it, that the media would justifiably go thermonuclear on us. I, I, <laughs> Right. The, the, if you think about it um, in the flip, it's absolutely absurd. It is. Mm -hmm. a, it is. It is absurd. And that's that's the problem that we find ourselves in, is that a lot of this is being done for performative reasons. Uh, there is no real serious approach mm -hmm. to the border uh, by Republicans. Uh, we've had the chance to to make the case. The last real serious attempt was 2006 in mm -hmm. the Bush era. If you didn't if you didn't like what Biden is putting out on the table right now, you could go back to that. If that framework. That. Can, can I just say, though, I am confused. I am quite concerned that the Congressional Hispanic Caucus has not been in any, uh, in any of the meetings. I am just literally sitting here processing that, like, they're going to have a their conversation. Let's just say, it sounds to me that you're saying that a, a, a bunch of non non-Hispanic, non-people of color are negotiating a bill that speaks directly to what is happening to non what is happening to Hispanic and Latino individuals at the U.S.-Mexico southern border. Is it, I don't know. That seems like a problem for me. I don't know about anybody else at the table. That's a huge problem, and it's what we've been saying every day. Every time I talk to the White House, it's the same every single time. When I talk to Senator Schumer, it's the same. Are they giving you a reason why? Mm -hmm. No. Absolutely no. 
not a reason why. I mean, the Hispanic Caucus has members, number one, we've been leading on this issue. Uh, number two, our members are immigrants ourselves. We're the children of immigrants. Mm -hmm. We represent uh, communities that are highly, you know, immigrant based that are represent southern uh, border cities as well and states. And it is just shocking uh, to me that you would just exclude the Hispanic Caucus from these conversations. Even the meeting that the president held last week at the White House, it wasn't just the four leaders. There was like 20 people. In it the was room. the ranking. It was the leadership and the ranking, ranking member members, of the yeah. committees and not a single Latino or Latina, not a single member of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus.